what's going to be the winning strategy? Well, when do you go to that uh, second set of tires? Of course, uh, as the uh, drivers work their way up the red straightaway, uh, they'll be looking to any of these drivers with championship uh, hopes. Uh, if you want to come out of here with at least some kind of a top five finish, uh, otherwise you're going to be playing catch up for the rest of the way. 13 Dodge cars, six Chevrolet, four Fords, as we said. Uh, certainly Dodge has the majority of the field and it's an all Dodge front row with Gary Clute 59, 74 Kevin Lacroix and then a couple of Chevrolets in row number two, Alex Tagliani who won the last race here back in August of 2018. There's only one thing better than showing up to opening day with a brand new sponsor and putting your car on the pole like Gary Clute did with his trail con leasing number 54 nine and that is winning on opening day we're gonna find out who's able to get it done the field bunches out of turn number 10 waiting for the green flag to be displayed at the third finish line and we are off with the 2019 nascar pinty series season underway into turn number one charging in at turn number one the full center gary clue goes to the front i believe lacroix got shuffled back into the number no able to hold off. He was being challenged for the number two spot as they work down off a of turn number two headed for three and we're seeing lots of side-by-side -side action going into the right-hander in turn number three and there are a couple of drivers and a little bit of bumping. DJ Kennington, 17, is part of that four-way fight just inside of the top 10. Watching Alex LeBay with LP Dumoulin side by side in that battle, look at how much ground they lost by battling together. As we've got one looking to the inside, that's Anthony Simone in the blue number one, outside of the top 10, but trying to make a move. Everybody at the front has gotten themselves into single file formation. Now it is a game of cat and mouse. How hard do you push? How bad do you want the lead? In our top 10 starters today, only one driver has never won a NASCAR Pinty Series race, and that was Peter Clute in the 42. Everybody else in the top 10 knows how to get to victory lane. Off the end of the Andretti straightaway, into the top of the S's here on lap number one of 51. Off a of turn 10, Clute 59 will bring them to the stripe. 74, your second place car, Kevin Lacroix, then Tagliani runs in third. The fourth place car, Mark Antoine Cameron, that's 27, Andrew Ranger, rounds up the top five. As we look at the back of the field, four cars have kind of trailed off at the back and lost the train, so to speak. Everybody else had a pretty competitive opening lap out there, and Gary Clute is not driving away, so he'll be spending a lot of time looking in his rearview mirror, see where he might be gaining speed, losing speed. Everybody else right now, I believe, is just sizing up the competition. They want to see what these cars are going to do. They work down through the left-hander at turn number four under the bridge down to Moss Corner there. You see just a little bit of dampness on the inside in the chute there. But other than that, nice and dry all the way through Moss Corner. And Clute 59, the pole center and early race leader, will bring them under the Mobile One Bridge as they climb that Andretti back straightaway. Lacroix, for the moment, content to sit there in the number two spot. Tagliani in 18, a sits third, and we've got a change in that sixth place position. One of the drivers moving up to make the pass going into the top of the S's. That was LP Dumoulin, the WeatherTech number 47, getting around Peter Klute in the 42. Just behind them is Alex LeBay in the 36, and he thought he was down on power yesterday on the long Mario Andretti straightaway. He says he doesn't think it's a horsepower issue. They just weren't getting RPMs. He think there was some sort of drag in the drive line. They were looking for that this morning. Alex LeMay, the driver, that number 36 in the top 10, but uh, not running as high as he would like to right now. Working lap number three, Kevin Lacroix in that second place position, officially 0.474 of a second back in second, but he now comes under pressure from Alex Tagliani in that EpiPen Rona St. Bear Chevrolet. Tagliani all over Lacroix for the number two spot as they swing down out of turn four, up into Moss Corner, and Clute continues to run at the point. Here's Tagliani on the inside of Lacroix. He will grab the number two spot. 22 moves up into third. Marc Antoine Cameron. So in the space of one corner, oh, and there's contact 
a Lacroix 74 may have a problem here. He is dropping back. Well, I'll tell you what his problem was. It was the 27 of Andrew Ranger. That is one driver you do not close the door on. Ranger had his nose to the inside of Lacroix coming off of turn five. Lacroix tried to close him off and get in front of him. Rangers, nah, -uh, I'm having none of that. Both of them went for a slide. Is Tagliani being overtaken for second? Hard contact between Mark Antoine Cameron and the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Here goes Dumoulin to make a move to the inside as well. And Cameron's there's left body work uh, damage on that 22 car of Mark Antoine Cameron, number 22, who has muscled his way around into that second place position. While all of that is going on, that has allowed our full center and race leader, Gary Clute, to pull away but Cameron in car number 22. Tagliani is off the pace. He must have cut a tire on that 18 machine or broken something in the steering of that race car. Look at the way it's sitting on the racetrack. I believe Tagliani has a flat right rear tire. We'll try to get a close up look with the way that car is driving. If it's not a right rear tire, possibly the rear end is broken in that car and it has shifted out of place, but we'll see. But that is a long way around this racetrack on a flat right rear, especially in left-hand turns. Almost impossible to control the car through a left-hand turn that way. Looking at Tagliani slowly rolling through Boss Corner, it is that right rear tire that is completely down. He's almost running it on the rim as he tries to limp his way back to the pits. But Tagliani, who won here last August on his way to a runner-up in the championship, Looks like uh, he is uh, going to have to come out of pit road and he'll be out of the running here this afternoon. And it's not going to put him out of contention, but we are under yellow, full course yellow being called by Sharpie, the new race director. For the first time in the history of the series, we have a new race director. Sharpie's doing a great job so far this weekend, and he has just given the command to put it out, which means we are going yellow. If I had to guess, it could be debris. And yeah, indeed, debris on the back straight, and you can see Tagliani's tires absolutely exploded. But what a fortunate break for Alex Tagliani. He's coming into a closed pit area right now, which he doesn't care because he was going to lose a lap. This way, as long as they can just change the tire and get back on the racetrack, he's not going to lose a lap. But uh, they can use an emergency tire, I believe. So they should be able to get an extra tire because it went flat and it won't affect their tire strategy, but that could have been catastrophic if it was the only tire he was able to change to him. And by the way, Pat, that contact with the 22, that's his teammate, Mark Antoine Cameron. Well, indeed, both running for Scott Steckley's team, but Cameron, that was the bodywork off the 22. I think that was the problem with the uh, debris on the racetrack and has brought out our full course yellow. So a debris caution, this should not be a long caution. There shouldn't be a whole lot of delay in getting the scoring together. When we go yellow in a NASCAR Pinty Series race, we go back to the last completed lap to set the race order. I don't believe anyone is a lap down at this point. Pit road is still closed, and Mark Antoine Cameron has just come down pit lane. When I say closed, I have a view here. The inside of turn 10, there is a red flag with a yellow cross on it being waved by Amy Wong, our official in that area. And Amy Wong just came over the official's radio saying 22 entered a closed pit. He will have to start at the end of the field. I believe if he'd have waited one more lap till pits opened, might have been a wiser choice for Mark Antoine Cameron. Of course, it's also possible Patty just felt bad for his teammate having to pit. So he thought, I'm going to go to the back with Alex and we'll both work our way. I don't think that's true for a second, but it is possible. Well, Cameron, uh, that 22 car, the uh, entire left front body work gone from that uh, race car as a result of the contact with uh, Alex uh, Tagliani. And for Tagliani, uh, his right rear uh, section there is gone. Again, the problem, contact with Cameron. So they're going to pick up the debris here, check over the racetrack as soon as the uh, NASCAR Pinty's officials are uh, confident that they've got the racetrack will be set to go back to green. Of course, the uh, 
time and the, the uh, number of laps continue to roll as we again look at the uh, situation there on the back straightaway with the uh, tag lead 18. He got into contact with somebody else there, I think, not just Cameron. I think they had their coming together here in turn number 10, but both of those cars with body damage, and that's certainly not going to help the speed up the Andretti straightaway. And I'll tell you, with more fans here for Castrol Speed Fest, Victoria Day Speed Fest weekend, I've never seen this many fans in this facility for this weekend. Let me tell you a few things about the NASCAR Pinty Series. Unlike our counterparts in other NASCAR Touring Series, we run fiberglass race car bodies. The great thing about that is aerodynamics. If, if you watch a lot of NASCAR on Sunday, or if you watch the all-star race last night, you'll hear them talk about aero conditions and aero push, aerodynamics. They don't mean squat on our race cars. Our race cars are fairly bulky in, in the shape of them. So Alex Tagliani is not gonna be affected in the least by the fact that that whole fender, the entire right rear portion of his race car is gonna peel the way at least the fiberglass. As long as all four tires are still pointed in the right direction on these cars, you can still be competitive. Pat, I think that's one of the greatest things of our race series is how durable these race cars are. Well, Tagliani being shown down in 23rd position, so if uh, he's going to be able to get up here into the top 10, he's going to have to turn in one inspired drive. Gary Clute, your race leader, five laps in the books. LP Dumoulin, 47, should line up alongside. Kevin Lacroix, 74, third. 27, Andrew Ranger, fourth, 42, Peter Clute up into fifth, 36, Alex Labbe in sixth, seventh is the three car of Jason Hathaway, DJ Kennington in the Castrol Edge Dodge, 17, up into eighth, one, Anthony Simone is in ninth, and zero, four, JF Dumoulin rounds out your top 10 as we continue to run under a 4 4 yellow in the Clarington 200. Pit Road is open. Brett Taylor and that number 46 are Justin's Rookie of the Year from the 2018 season, heading down pit lane. Mark Antoine Cameron coming down as well. Again, the great thing about these race cars, Mark Antoine Cameron with a lot of damage to the bodywork on the left front. A pace lap takes so long here at CTMP, it's more than three minutes to get around the racetrack under yellow that the Scott Steckley team for Mark Antoine Cameron and that GM Paye number 22, they can put the car up in the air if they have to adjust the front end of that race car because when you take a hit in the front end like that, it's quite possible to knock the front end alignment, knock the toe out on the race car. So they'll have the opportunity if they need to adjust it, it doesn't look like they are. But what it does appear they're doing is securing what's left of that left front fender because it's a lot of racing left to come. You need all the front bumper you can get in this series. So they want to make sure Mark Antoine Cameron has all the tools a driver needs to go out there and still be competitive. I wouldn't be worried about track position so much right now because everyone has to pit in this race anyhow. They're all gonna be coming back to pit road. Obviously, it's a nicer view when you're in the top five than it is when you're outside of the top 20, but I certainly don't think it takes either of these drivers out of contention to take a win today. Well, the 22 racing crew down there getting uh, in a lot of work here early in the run here this afternoon as the 59 of Gary Clute has gone through. Lap six goes up on the board. Uh, LP Dumoulin, 47, is going to line up alongside of him. And Dumoulin, who qualified seventh fastest, uh, was putting on a real charge and uh, did uh, benefit from a lot of the uh, action that was going on around him and now sits, sits up there uh, second in the rundown. Andrew Ranger. Uh, sitting uh, fourth after qualifying fifth fastest in that Mopar Pennzoil Dodge. Andrew Ranger certainly knows his way around a road course and of course was part of that uh, controversial finish a year ago here on the uh, Victoria Day weekend with that uh, attempted pass down in Moss Corner and we've already seen some action down there with uh, some passing and that's one of the spots if you can get the car up alongside able to stuff it going into 5B and we've seen a number of passes there. And these teams all have spotters. So the driver has two-way radio communication. Some of them will have spotters in various spots on the racetrack to help the driver know what's going on around them. One of the popular spots is to send someone down to turn number five. 
So Kevin Lacroix, we, we saw him get overtaken on the inside by Alex Tagliani. It makes me wonder if he had the right communication with his spotter, if he had someone to clear him to pull into line, because we saw Lacroix get all kinds of sideways and through the grass when he and Andrew Ranger made some contact. I'm going to have a look at Ranger's number 27. Doesn't look to be any damage to that Mopar 27 of Andrew Ranger or really to the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, but that was definitely a tense moment because they're really getting up to speed at that point on the straightaway, so you're nothing but flat out on the throttle. So to go sideways and through the grass can be a, a hair-raising experience. Well, some of the other drivers who've uh, picked up two or three positions here in the early going, including the 64 of Mark Dilley, qualified 18 fastest in the Ford and is now being shown 15th in the rundown as we continue here with the uh, full course yellow. And again, Tagliani and the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron back into the pits for some further work. So 64, Mark Dilley picking up three positions from where he started here on the grid. And we're back underway with the 18 and the 22, still showing here in 22nd and 23rd, right at the tail end of the field, as we uh, await here the completion of the cleanup of the debris on the racetrack, and then we'll be set to go here uh, back to green. Uh, 51 laps scheduled, they've got till 3.20 this afternoon is the uh, window, so uh, we should be able to get in all 51 laps and get to the 200 kilometers that is the official race distance this afternoon. Unbelievable. Our vantage point is the outside of turn number 10, and I'm looking down at the roadway coming into the track. Cars are still lined up bumper to bumper to get into this event. The parking area is absolutely jammed. Thankfully, we have a lot of acres here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. So there's a lot of places for people to go, and I hope you're enjoying the afternoon here. It's been a great weekend. We've had every sort of weather you can imagine. But great conditions right now. We're going to go back to green this time. The field is about to double up once they get down towards the end of this straightaway. And the lights have been turned off on the uh, Chevrolet Camaro pace car, drivers working uh, the steering wheel back and forth, getting uh, heat into those general tires. Gary Clute, uh, although challenged there a couple of times in the first two laps or so, uh, doing a nice job of keeping that tail con leasing Dodge up there in the point position, was the only driver to put a lap at a minute 21 and change during the qualifying session that uh, ran right at the end of the day yesterday when it was uh, somewhat cooler. And just looking at the best lap time so far with uh, everything that was going on at the front, a minute 24.482 is the fastest lap anybody has turned, and that belongs to L.P. Dumoulin. Uh, Gary Clute, our leader at the moment, a minute 24.721. So uh, they're off about two and a half seconds or so from where they ran yesterday in qualifying. Getting geared up for the restart. Double file. Gary Clute is the race leader. He has the opportunity to fire first, but LP Dumoulin in the WeatherTech 47, he knows how this game is played. If you're wanting to see some excitement, keep your eye on the 18 of Alex Tagliani, the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron coming from the back of the field and a great restart for Kevin Lacroix, the 74. He gets to the inside of LP Dumoulin. He'll take that second position between turn one and turn number two. He's going to set his sights on the race leader, Gary Clute. The front of the field sorted itself out very quickly here on this restart. Gary Clute back to the front. 74, Kevin Lacroix in second. Your third place runner is 47, LP Dumoulin. And then Andrew Ranger in the Mopar Dodge sits in fourth as they work the short shoot. Coming under the bridge at turn number four. Now it's downhill into the chute. And then back uphill into Lost Corner and Clute will bring this freight train of NASCAR 50 Series cars through the right-hander here at 5B and on up the back straightaway. Now, can the 18 car, the last two cars, they're still running 22nd and 23rd. Tagliani and Mark Antoine Tamaran, uh, they're going to have to start making a big charge up through the field. We work lap number nine. 
Yeah, they'll want to get track position. You never know when you're going to get another yellow here at these races at CTMP, so they can't afford to fall too far behind the leaders, so they don't want to take too many chances, but at the same time, it is go time for these drivers as we look back. Alex Tagliani right behind some very experienced racers, Donald Teach in the 24, Mark Dilley in the 64. Right behind him is that 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron, so he's going to try to match Tagliani move for move coming through the field at the front. It is just as it was. Gary Clute out in front. Welcome to the NASCAR Pinty Series Trail Con Leasing. So pleased to have you on board one of these race cars, and he's giving you a heck of a show right now. Gary Clute leading the way as he has from the drop of the initial green flag. A couple of different lines through turn number three as Clute was a little wider going into that right-hander. Lacroix in 74 was tucked in a little bit tighter on the inside. Now, the race leader, Gary Clute, up into turn number five at Moss Corner. On the inside, Kevin Lacroix took a look. There was a bit of a tap there, and Lacroix grabs the lead as uh, Gary Clute got a little bit loose coming out of 5B. Now he's going to battle back and go side by side with Lacroix. But for the moment, Kevin Lacroix out in front, and now that is going to move. That 47 car of LP Dumoulin is second, so Gary Clute gets shuffled from the lead into third. LP Dumoulin had a choice to make coming out of turn number five. Do I push Gary Clute? Do I push Kevin Lacroix? He chose to push Kevin Lacroix. Now, you can't tell me that draft didn't help Lacroix get out in front as Anthony Simone to the inside of Jason Hathaway in turn number 10. Power move by Simone. And DJ Kennington looking up here to make a move. DJ into the ninth place position. He is right behind Simone and Hathaway. That is a great battle going on for seven, eight, and nine on the racetrack. So Kevin Lacroix out in front. He's got a couple of car lengths over LP Dumoulin. Gary Clute not falling back at all. Alex LeBay, this is as close as he's been to the front all day long in that black and green number 36. Of course, LeBay was the 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series champion. Last year, he raced down south in the Xfinity Series. He is back to chase the championship once again with us in 2019. And he's right there in the mix with the rest of the top five or six cars. None of them willing to let Kevin Lacroix drive away and have this one all, all to himself. Well, 22, Mark Antoine Cameron and Alex Tagliani are both charging up through the field. They just got around Martin Hill at 64. So I think now unofficially they're up in the 14th and 15th on the racetrack as those drivers are turning laps in the minute 24s, just about the pace that's going on at the front. And, and really, the pace has settled down to a minute 25. A couple of them are dipping into the 24s. Some of them are up into the 26s. But it, it looks like the tires are settling into a minute 25 right now for the lead pack. And I'm curious if your car has a little bit of a push or an understeer, or if it's a little bit loose, a little bit oversteer, it's really going to magnify the tire wear. So the, the drivers with the best balance on these race cars are the ones that are going to see their cars fall off less than their competitors. We have a good look there at DJ Kennington, the Castro Ledge 17. He's a great driver, maintaining the balance on that race car, keeping himself comfortable and not pushing the limits. I think that might pay off as we get deep into the tire wear. Working lot number 12 of Schedule 51. We've had a number of different leaders as 74, Kevin Lacroix, and the 47 of LP Dumoulin, Gary Clute. Fourth is still Andrew Ranger, 27, and then Alex LeBay in the 36, sitting there in the fifth place spot. DJ Kennington continues to put the pressure on the number one of Anthony Simeone as they head up the back three. 11 laps down, 40 laps remain in the Clarington 200, the first event of the NASCAR Pinty season. The field runs up through eight, turn nine. They'll come into our vantage point in turn number 10, and LP Dumoulin closing the gap on Kevin Lacroix. As we're seeing a style of race that I've never seen. I've been, I've been calling races, Pat, with this series since its inception in 2007. I have never seen. Normally when a driver takes the lead, gets out in front, they're able to pull away a little bit. There's a reason they were able to take the lead. We saw Kevin Lacroix get out there, taking advantage of about probably 10 car lengths with his biggest lead, but look now, LP Dumoulin closing the gap as Lacroix. You could see the tail of the 74 wagon through turn number two, just hanging it out just ever so slightly. 
L.P. Dumoulin's car looks to be handling a little bit better. He's closing the distance. Here, race dealer, uh, leader 74, Kevin Lacroix by .324 of a second as they completed that 12th lap. Gary Clute, the pole sitter and early leader down there in third, but Clute is right there on the pace. As the lap times fall into the minute 24s, everybody up in that lead uh, pack are on the minute 24 second lap times. And now it's single file up the end, ready straight away. Dumoulin, 47, to within a car length here of Lacroix. He's going to go for the lead under the Canadian tire bridge. Takes a look on the outside. He'll tuck back in and just couldn't quite get there as he pulled out of the trap. Gary Clute right there in third, and they've opened up a little bit of a gap back to Andrew Ranger in that fourth place spot. If we've learned anything over the years watching Kevin Lacroix, he runs every lap as hard as he possibly can, and it's cost him a time or two. He, he is prone to making mistakes. Alfie Dumoulin is a savvy rate. Wow, Lacroix, all sorts of loose through turn number one. Alfie Dumoulin, I'm sure he didn't think he could make that pass on the outside into turn eight. But it forces Kevin Lacroix to look in his rearview mirror. You're taking his focus away from what he's doing. So L.P. Dumont right now is playing the veteran card. He's, I'm not going to say he's messing with Kevin Lacroix, but he's using the tools that he has. He go all over the racetrack as David Thorndike in the 67 with a problem. He ducks off the right side of the racetrack. Not sure if this should bring out a full course caution because that's not a great place to be stopped. And I think that's uh, in and uh, we do go to a full course yellow here. There it is. That car of David Thorndike who started 23rd in the Thorson ZBT Chevrolet. I think he is uh, pulled off of the racetrack right here on the back straightaway somewhere. Well, there it is, yes. Thorndike's car about halfway up the end, ready straightaway, parked to the right. And they go to the second full force yellow here, working lap number 14. A beautiful afternoon for racing. And boy, oh boy, how much fun is it that we get to share this? I, I'm, I'm equally as excited at the throngs of race fans that have shown up live to watch it. There's nothing like seeing it, hearing it, and smelling it, but pretty cool that we can stream it online for, for guests all across Canada, all around the world, for the millions watching at home. As we work lap number 15 for the second time under a full course yellow, here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, the most recent full course yellow result of uh, driver 67 David Thorndike in that Thornton Chevrolet pulling off the racetrack about halfway up the back straightaway. No damage to the car. Evidently, something uh, mechanical has uh, gone amiss in the powertrain, and Thorndike, the veteran driver, has pulled it off the racetrack. Not in a good position. The reason they've gone to the second full course yellow of the afternoon the first of course uh, was for debris on the racetrack we were watching the charge back up through the field uh, from two of our top drivers alex tagliani who started third on the grid was involved in one of those incidents has come all the way up into 14 and 15 right behind him his teammate mark antoine cameron so this second full course yellow will be a benefit to those two drivers as they try to climb their way back up to the front. Kevin Lacroix, your leader, as we work lap number 15 under the full course yellow, the 47 of L.P. Dumoulin in second, Gary Clute, our pole sitter, 59 third, 27 Andrew Ranger in the Mopar Dodge fourth, and Alex LeBay in the 36. Rounds out your top five. It has been a contest from the drop of the green flag. We've seen different drivers able to contend and even take the lead. So passing on the racetrack, which can be tough, especially in a track like CTMP. It's a 51-lap race where these drivers know you can gain and lose spots on pit road. You can gain and lose spots through strategy. So quite often, it's in your best interest to just settle into a groove run your pace and take your opportunities when they come. But what we're seeing from these drivers, they want it now. 
they want to make these moves. We'll see if pit lane is open this time. So far, the red flag still being displayed, but we are in the pit window for fuel. If they top up with fuel, I believe these cars can go the entire distance, but pit road remains closed at the moment with the field coming past the entrance of pit lane. And one final thing we want to say to the people watching the live stream, our apologies that we weren't able to uh, get things up for the green flag, some technical difficulties, but thank you so much for joining us now. And we hope to have you right through at the end of the Clarington 200. Well, the next best thing to being here live at uh, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, as you said, Adam, we've been coming here for decades, and this is a tremendous Castrol Victoria Day Speed Fest crowd that has come out here. Not only the thousands upon thousands who have been out here since Thursday and Friday with their campers, with their tents and motorhomes, but just the great race day crowd who uh, drove here from all over Ontario and I'm sure some down from uh, Quebec and from uh, upstate New York as well as elsewhere. And we're starting to see one of the cars on pit road there, the 02 of TJ Renovato is in and out. Not sure if uh, they completed, just checking something over on the race car. TJ Renamato making his maiden voyage with an NASCAR Pinty Series. The Hauler Magazine sponsored number 02 Ford. And if you're saying, wait a second, it's usually Kerry Mixer, Mark Dilly in the 02. Mark Dilly has jumped over to the 64 car, a throwback this year from his uh, from his glory days in the 1990s. Although don't tell Mark he's not still in his glory days because I think he'd be a little bit upset. But great to see him. NTN bearings on the car, Leland Industries on the car, and it's the number 64 Ford for Mark Dilly. Well, Byron Nelson with uh, Leland Industries, a longtime sponsor with uh, Mark. As uh, Mark qualified 18th, he did move up as high as 15th at one time, but now has dropped back into 17th. We're going to, I think, really see Mark shine once we get onto the ovals. Well, that's definitely his strength, and we look forward to seeing what he can produce there. David Thorndike heads straight to the garage area. The tow truck pushes him down pit road. He turn, makes the hard right turn to head back towards the paddock. One of the nicest guys in the garage area, Dave Thorndike from Oshawa, Ontario, and that Thorson's EVT number 67. Pit road is open. Let's see who is going to take advantage. The field about a minute away, coming up the end of the Mario Andretti straightaway. They have to snake through turn eight, turn nine, and then the exit of turn nine, they have to commit to the far right side of the racetrack to head down pit road. Well, the lights are still on at that Chevrolet Camaro pace car as it uh, is about to roll under the Canadian Tire Bridge at the top of the Andretti straightaway. And then uh, we'll see how many of these drivers, as we'll be coming up here to complete lap number 16, decide to make the duck onto pit road. 51 laps scheduled. If you come in here on lap number 16, you top it up in fuel, you should be able to go the rest of the way, even if all of those laps are under green. Now we're gonna see who decides to take tires. I, I don't think anybody would want to take tires right now, but they are all coming to the pitch. You might see someone roll the dice deep in the field, take tires, so when everyone else pits to take their fresh general tires, the driver who stayed out will get track position. So the way this works, you can take fuel or four tires in one pit stop. You cannot do both on the same pit stop as per NASCAR Pinty series rules. The reason for that rule is to save teams money and the number of people they have to bring to the track to service these cars. So right now, everybody coming in to top up with fuel. We looked at Kevin McQuan, that bumper to bumper number 74. They'll pack it full of race fuel head back onto the racetrack. Doesn't look like too many changes. Andrew Ranger, Fishtails, Jason Hathaway leaves his box with the fuel can still in the number three Kubota car. And there were just four cars that stayed out on the racetrack. This is going to give the lead over to the 18 of Alex Tagliani, who stayed out, as did the 77 of uh, Jocelyn uh, Fecto as well as the 20 of Raymond uh, Guay and the 02 of TJ Renamato. So four cars stayed out on the racetrack while the rest of the field came on a pit road. And I don't know everything, Pat, but I would venture to guess 
TJ Renamata in the 0-2, Raymond Gay in the 20. They want nothing to do with starting up at the front of this field. These guys are out here for fun. They're still gaining experience in these NASCAR Pinty Series cars, and that's jumping right into the Hornets' nest. So I believe we'll see them duck down pit road or somehow fall to the back. Again, I'm wrong an awful lot, but I like to speculate on things. It'd be pretty hairy if these guys restarted the front of the field because there's some hungry race car drivers behind them as we just looked at a replay of Jason Hathaway dragging the catch can, sorry, not the catch can, the fuel can out of the pit box of that number three team. And so we will reset the running order. We work lap number 17 in the Clarington 200, the opening race of the 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series. Uh, we have had just uh, uh, about a little bit of everything so far here this afternoon. And right now working lap 17 under the full course yellow. The lights are still on the uh, pace and safety cars. So it'll be at least another couple of laps before we are set to go back to green. And what we're going to see right now is if anyone chooses to take tires. So, so we started to explain uh, the rules that the NASCAR Pinty Series has. You can't do fuel and tires on the same stop. It's a cost-saving measure. So now would be the opportunity for these teams come in and possibly take on tires if they choose to do that. I would be surprised if any of the front runners choose that strategy. I just think you're giving too much up for late in this race. But we're going to find out in three more turns as the field rolls through turn eight, headed up towards turn number nine and the entrance to pit road. Looking at where those uh, lap times were just before this uh, second full course yellow, uh, just about all of the cars running inside of the top 10 had uh, put up laps at a minute 24 and change. Safety car rolls into turn 10. And so far, everybody stays in line. Nobody makes the turn to the right to come out of pit road. So uh, they'll uh, go back around we'll, as soon as we get the inv indication here that they're going back to green. Uh, they'll uh, flip the lights off on that safety car as it comes up the back straightaway. A couple of takers on a pit road. Riley Herbst in the 28, J.F. LaBerge in the 91. We're hearing over the radio, Jason Hathaway in the three, Raymond Gay in the 20 and the 02 of T.J. Reno Motto being penalized to the back of the field. Two for entering closed pit roads and the three car of Jason Hathaway for exiting his pit stall with equipment still attached to the car. So penalties there for a number of drivers that are going to drop them further down. Alex Tagliani stays out on the racetrack. He is your race leader, but again has not come on to uh, pit road since we went to this full course yellow. As uh, he made uh, a number of stops earlier for repairs uh, to the car and of course to uh, put that uh, right rear tire on after cutting it down early in the run. Working lap 18 of a scheduled 51, Alex Tagliani in the number 18, Rona EpiPen St. Bear Chevrolet is your race leader and uh, looking to see where the pole sitter is, Gary Clute showing down in sixth position, fifth is Kevin Lacroix and then behind him in seventh, LP Dumoulin, 27, Andrew Ranger, eighth. DJ Kennington, 17, is ninth. And rounding out your top 10, Alex LeBay in the 36. Coming back towards the restart. Full loads of fuel. Fairly worn out. General tires on these race cars, 17 laps most of which have been up to speed. Plus, these are the same tires they qualified on yesterday afternoon. This is the part of the race where the drivers, they just want fresh rubber. They know they can't have it yet because the winning strategy means put it off as long as you can, but these drivers have to be screaming for better rubber on these race cars. They qualified three seconds faster than what they're racing right now. Uh, at least that's what Gary Clute qualified in a 121.9. The fastest lap of the race right now is a 124.1. What a huge difference. And the lights have been turned off on the pace car as it rolls off of the end of the Andretti straightaway and will bring the field of cars through the top of the S's here and then uh, make that turn onto pit road. The field will line up and as they swing off of turn number 10, 
looking to get the uh, green flag from the flagger stand to get us back underway and racing again. It'll be 18 laps in the books next time by in a race scheduled to go 51. They line up in turn number nine, side by side. It'll be Tagliani 18 and Jocelyn Fecto alongside. That rock store number 77 of Jocelyn Fecto. He is going to be right in the middle of this business, headed down to turn number one from the outside of row number one. And he immediately moves to the outside. In fact, does not really come up to speed on that restart. Likely took Gary Clute by surprise. He was right behind him as uh, Clute had to hesitate just a little bit before he was able to take off. And the field all manages to get through turn number one. Down into two is Tagliani. Out in front in the number 18 with Kevin Lacroix in the 74 second. LP Dumoulin in the 47 running third. And then is Gary Clute in the 59 running fourth with Andrew Ranger in the Mopar 27 rounding out the top five. Andrew Ranger up into that fifth place position. Also looking to make a move here. Anthony Simone in the number one car. I believe he has picked off one spot here on the restart. Up into Moss Corner on lap number 19, your race leader. Alex Tagliani just ahead of 74, Kevin Lacroix, L.P. Dumoulin runs in third, Gary Clute fourth, and Andrew Ranger 27 back in fifth. Everybody single file way back in the screen. You can see Mark Dilly in that NTN Barry's number 64 poking his nose out of line. Now here goes the Simone to the outside of Alex LeBay looking into turn number eight. And I believe DJ Kennington is part of that battle there as well as they run in down through turn number 10 and on the start finish straight away Tagliani in that Rona EpiPen Chevrolet will bring them to the line and lap number 19 will go up on the board. Lap after lap these drivers running so close and oh there's the 77 Roxor machine of Jocelyn Fecto window net down on that race car we are under yellow and the window net going down on the car is a sign to race control that you are okay. That's turn number eight at the uh, top of the S as one of the cars sliding off into the runoff and then into the tire walls. So just as we went back to green, we go to our third full course yellow here of the afternoon. We'll get a number on that car that has slid off there in turn number eight. Jocelyn Fecto, the 77, who restarted second, uh, did not come up to speed. Don't know if he had a problem on the race car. He definitely has a problem now. Judging by the way the tires have been moved down there, it doesn't look like he hit it too terribly hard, but that is such a high-speed corner. There is no real soft landings at that part of the racetrack, Pat. Oh, you're carrying a lot of speed coming and cresting the hill at the end of that Andretti straightaway, and... They paved that area a number of years ago, so you do a run off the racetrack. You've got pavement to try to slow the car down as much as you can before it uh, comes to rest against those tire walls. Driver uh, still in the car, appears to be okay. As you said, uh, tire walls not really moved uh, that much, but uh, this does bring out our third full course yellow here of the afternoon. Again, uh, 320 p.m. Eastern is the time window for the event in which to get in the schedule 51 laps that takes us to the 200 kilometers that is the Clarington 200. So Alex Tagliani leads the chain up through turn number 10. They're still waiting for the pace vehicle to roll out and take control of the field. Tagliani ahead of Kevin Lacroix in the 74, LP Doom on the 47, Gary Clute in the 59. Andrew Ranger in the 27, the 17 of DJ Kennington, the 36 of Alex LeBay, the 1 of Anthony Simone, the 04 of J.F. Dumoulin, and the 24 of Donald Teach, rounding out the top 10. 11th on back is the 21 of Jason White, the 22 of Marc Antoine Cameron, 37 of Simone Dion Vienne, 42 of Peter Clute, the 3 of Jason Hathaway, 64 of Mark Dilley, the 46 of Brett Taylor, 28 of Riley Herbst, the 91 of J.F. LaBerge, and the 20 of Raymond Gay. One other car is on the lead lap, and that's the 0-2 of T.J. Renamato in the 21st spot. And laps down now are Jocelyn Fecto in the 77, and of course David Thorndike in the 67, who is out of the event. 
Well, Jocelyn Fecto out of the race car, uh, just walking around, talking to some of the officials over there. He goes out on lap number 19, and for David Thorndike, he had some kind of a mechanical problem that put him out on lap number 13. So we still have 21 of the 23 cars that took the green flag back here at about 1.30 p.m. Eastern, still out there on the racetrack. Right now, just circulating slowly behind the safety car. I would think it's at least a couple of more laps before they get the tow truck uh, and get that car out of there of Jocelyn Facto 77. Tagliani, your leader, 20 laps completed, 31 to go. As Kevin Lacroix, 74 in second, 47 LP Dumoulin third, our pole sitter, Gary Kluth in fourth, Andrew Ranger, who has been knocking around that fifth place position much of the race so far. That's exactly where he is now, but here's one driver who's made up uh, quite a bit of ground after starting back on the outside of row five in 10th starting position. DJ Kennington is sixth in the Castro Edge Dodge. DJ, of course, one of the uh, the veterans in the uh, NASCAR Pinty series. And Adam, I remember watching uh, a teenager at uh, Delaware Speedway he had just come out of the karting ranks. And unlike many karting uh, racers go on to road racing, he got into the, uh, back then, the Cascar series and was an outstanding driver and uh, has uh, done uh, just a, a terrific, terrific job of uh, bringing that team. And of course, uh, um, it's gotta be well over 20 years having uh, Castrol as his main title sponsor on the car. Yeah, one of the long-standing relationships in Canadian motorsports is DJ Kennington and the Kennington family with Castrol. Great to see them back every year when they when they show up and every year when they make the announcement that they're gonna continue on. It's just a, a perfect marriage seemingly and pit road still not open. So we're not going to see if anyone is coming in for tires. But as you look at the cars go by and all the cars that have damage on them, you rarely see the 17 of DJ Cannington with, with even a mark on the car. He doesn't like fixing these race cars between race events. And we've got one car coming into the pits that's a bit of a surprise. Mark Dilly enters a closed pit in the 64. That'll put him back to the end of the longest line. But DJ Cannington loves working on race cars. He loves preparing race cars to go racing does not like having to fix them. Mark Dilly had been running in 16th after qualifying 18th here on the outside of row nine, but Dilly coming on to pit road. They go to the left rear of the car and looks like uh, they are gonna change uh, tires all the way around on the Dilly no. 64. No tires. I, I think they either put in a spring rubber or took out a spring rubber from the rear suspension. You can see no tires coming on or off the race car, but that is one way you can adjust the handling of the car is by adding a spring rubber, which makes the rear end stiffer, or softening the rear end by pulling a spring rubber out. What, what we mean by spring rubber, it's basically a chunk of rubber shaped like the spring that you wedge between two coils of, these, of the rear springs of the race car and it makes the spring stiffer because it can't compress anymore. Or you start the race with those rubbers in and they have three little handles on them and you jack the car up, you can pull them out. It allows the car to compress more on the spring and softens it up. Well, looking to go back to uh, green flag racing here, the safety car makes his way down through turn four, heading up into Moss Corner, the hairpin at the uh, bottom end of the racetrack here but the lights are still on, so we will not get that green flag this time by. I think it'll be at least another couple of laps. Uh, took them a little while to get the tow truck over there to get the Jocelyn Facto car off of the outfield of turn number eight after he ran off at the end of the Andretti straightaway to bring out our third full course yellow of the afternoon. Working lap number 22 of a schedule 51 in the Clarington 200 here at uh, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Uh, this kicks off a full afternoon of racing as the Nissan Micro Cup race uh, will follow at 3.30. Then we have our Pirelli GT4 America Sprint Race and to close out what's been a marvelous weekend of uh, racing to kick off the season here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park will be the CTCC, 
uh, more affectionately known uh, to longtime fans as the Canadian uh, Touring Car Championship presented by Pirelli. That'll be a 40-minute race set to go just after uh, 5.30. So it looks like uh, they've got the car out of there, but now uh, they're trying to reposition some of those tire barriers on the outfield of turn number eight. So that is the reason that we maintain this uh, full course yellow here this afternoon. And pit road has just opened and it looks like we've got some takers. Team Cannington, Andrew Ranger in the Mopar 27, DJ Cannington in the Castrol 17, peel off to pit road. So does the 21 of Jason White. Let's see if they're down for chassis adjustments or if they're gonna take on those four new general tires. They only get four new tires. The four they started the race with on the car and they get one set of tires they can change to for the entire race. So it looks like they're coming around the left side of the car. Here come the tire carriers. It's gonna be a tire change for the 17 of DJ Kennington and the 27 of Andrew Ranger as that Castrol Edge crew goes to work. DJ Kennington, the only driver in the field to have competed in all 147 prior NASCAR Pinty Series races. And it looks like uh, the majority of the other drivers did uh, stay out there on the racetrack as we officially complete lap number 22. And a couple of drivers running off of the lead lap. The 21 of Jason White. Haven't talked a whole lot about him. Jason White being shown in 20th position. And of course, Mark Dillon, who came in earlier, uh, he is being shown in 21st position. Uh, one lap down here at the moment. Great pit stop by the Mopar team under the guidance of Dave White. Now, Whitey has long been associated with DJ Kennington. The last couple of years, he's been the crew chief for Andrew Ranger, and he just formed Dave White Motorsports. In fact, that 17 of DJ Kennington is a brand new Dave White built chassis. As we get a look at the 77 Effecto, thankfully doesn't look like a ton of damage. Looks like that right rear may have gone down on the car that could have caused him to spin out but hopefully not too much damage, and we'll be able to see Jocelyn Fecto out later on in the season. We're continuing on pit road on that uh, number 17, Castrol Edge Dodge of uh, DJ Kennington. And it looks like they may be making uh, some kind of other adjustment or repair to the right rear on the car. DJ had worked his way up into the sixth place position so uh adam i don't think this is routine what we're seeing there on pit road as we continue to sit under the full course yellow definitely not routine not sure if they got a lug nut jammed or if, if maybe a stud broke on the car the car down off the jack and dj slowly pulling away those are two brand new tires on the left side of the car i can assume the tires on the right side of the car also new but definitely not the typical DJ Kennington pit stop. We are still under the full course yellow. The light's still on the safety car. So it'll be at least one more lap before we're set to go back to green. As we work, lap number 23 will be completed next time by scheduled uh, 51 laps to make up to 200 uh, kilometers. Uh, it has been a real shuffling of the running order as they go through. Tagliani in car number 18, still your leader, 74. Kevin Lacroix in second. L.P. Dumoulin, 47 third. The pole sitter, fast qualifier from yesterday, Gary Clute, who did an outstanding job in car number 59. They're in fourth. Alex LeBay in the 36 is fifth. Anthony Simone has moved up into 7th, 4 J.F. Newman in 7th. Donald Teach, not known for his prowess on a road course, a much stronger driver on the ovals, but Donald Teach having a pretty good run here. He is 8th in car number 24, the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron back up into the top 10. He is ninth in car number 22, and then rounding out your top 10, it is 37, Simone, uh, Dion Vien as uh, we work lap 24 and uh, 
far too many of the laps have been under full course shell and we want to get back to green so we can really see these drivers put on a show here this afternoon. Some have tires, some are holding off till later in the race, but race man's Pinties, founded in 1943, produces and provides a complete range of premium quality fresh and frozen chicken products to the retail and food service industry throughout Canada. Pinty's a proud sponsor of the NASCAR Pinty Series. Of course, this kicks off what will be a marvelous summer of racing here at uh, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Our uh, next big weekend will be the Barack Vintage Festival on the June 14, 15, 16th weekend. Great way to spend Father's Day. And then we'll be back in July for the Mobile One Sports Car Grand Prix, July 4, 5, 6, 7, Thursday to Sunday. Big weekend here uh, featuring the uh, WeatherTech uh, Championship and a host of support class events. And then August, we've got two monster weekends. The 9th, 10th, and 11th of August will be the annual Superbike Doubleheader. They're kicking off their season today at Shannonville. Those top motorcycle superbike riders and all these support classes here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, August 9, 10, 11. And then uh, the Chevy Silverado 250, the NASCAR Truck Series, along with these NASCAR Pinties uh, Series teams will be back here for what will be an outstanding late August weekend. That's the weekend before Labor Day. August 23rd, 4th, and 5th. And uh, there'll be some interesting races uh, in between those two road course runs for the NASCAR Pinty Series here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Looks like we're headed back to a green flag. I'll tell you what I like about this strategy employed by DJ Kennington, Andrew Granger, Jason Hathaway. What we saw is these tires immediately fall off. After about three laps, the tires fall off half a second. Then they fall off about another second over the course of time. They seem to have leveled off, though. So if Cannington and Ranger, through pit stop cycles, can get back to the front, all they have to do is keep the cars behind them to take on new tires later. Wow, they did not come up to speed very well deep in the field. All they have to do is hold them off for a couple of laps, and then everybody should even out. So let's see if this strategy pays off for Kennington, Ranger, Hathaway, and the others who took tires. But right now we're back to green flag action with a great battle between Kevin Lacroix and Alex Tagliani. And Lacroix has gotten around Tagliani up in turn number two. So Kevin Lacroix in car number 74, the bumper to bumper dodge has gone to the front tagliani in the chevrolet shuffled back into the number two spot and then i believe it's the 59 there of clute gary clute slides into the third place position up in a boss corner in the, the restart then it is 22 yes there it is making a big charge up mark antoine cameron i think picked up a couple of positions on that restart and we'll watch for the Mopar 27 and the Castrol 17, a couple drivers with fresh tires. They won't want to be too bold. They don't want to take any chances, but they definitely want to take advantage of the new rubber while it's still fresh and pick up as many positions as they can. Gary Clune having a quick look to the inside down into turn number eight. Nothing doing there as Tagliani maintains that position. But wow, Kevin Lacroix in the 74 is driving that car loose through the S's. 47 up into the fourth place spot, LP Dumoulin as he goes through. And Gary Kluge, 59, looks like he is starting to reel in. Alex Tagliani in that battle going on for second. Dumoulin is part of that fight. And then we've got just a little bit of a gap to Alex LeBay. Anthony uh, Simone in car number one running in sixth. And then the 0-4 of JF Dumoulin in seventh. And Kevin Lacroix stretching that advantage. This is about as big a lead as we've seen anybody enjoy during this Clarington 200. They are about to take the halfway mark. 26 laps down, 25 laps to go this time when they cross the stripe. Alex Tagliani losing some ground on the leader, Kevin Lacroix, but none of these drivers have yet taken fresh rubber. So they will still expect them on pit road at some point before the end of this event. Biggest lead of the race belongs to 74, Kevin Lacroix in that bumper to bumper dodge. He has opened up a good 15 car lengths on the battle going on for second between 18.
Alex Tagliani and the pole sitter Gary Clute. Here's Clute, takes a look on the inside into the top of the S's, can't get around as Tagliani will shut the door. They slide through turn number nine and into 10. LaCroix, your leader on the start finish right away, but Clute trying to muscle his car around Tagliani as again they work down into turn number one tagliani will hold the spot but it is a freight train of cars running here second all the way back through about seven for the second consecutive lap gary clue looked to the inside of tagliani at the end of the long back straightaway but you know what else i'm noticing right now andrew ranger is not having an easy time working his way back through this field Ranger being shown in 12th there as we work lap 27 of 51. And Kevin Lacroix has opened up about a second and a half over this six driver battle that's going on for that second place position. Up in the Moss corner, it's still about 15, 20 car lengths between first place driver 74 Kevin Lacroix and Alex Tagliani in the 18. Gary Kloop is right there. Clute tucked right behind the 18 of Tagliani. We'll see if he takes another shot at him going into the SEC. He's right there within about half the car like now. Gary Clute takes a look on the inside again into turn number eight. And Gary Clute will make the pass. No! Tagliani just shuts the door into turn eight. Tagliani out broke Gary Clute. Clute's going to try the inside of turn number 10. That's where we saw Mark Antoine Cameron make his move earlier. Lots of bumper tag going on. Tagliani loses one spot in that free, and it could have been a whole lot worse. But Alex LeMay, LP Dumla, they got playing bumper tag running into each other coming through 10, and that sort of spoiled the momentum that Dumlin had. And that allows Alex Tagliani to hang on to that third spot. Now the Clute's up into second. Let's see if he's able to close in on Kevin Lacroix. Well, while that was going on, Lacroix has added to his lead. It's almost three seconds as 59, Gary Clute and Alex Tagliani went at it. In a turn number 10, Tagliani taps the left rear of the Clute car as he was able to just squeeze through on the inside. And that shuffled a couple of other positions, but Gary Clute trying to go after the race leader 74, Kevin Lacroix as they exit turn 5B out of the Moss hairpin and head up the back straight. Gary Clute has put some distance on Alex Tagliani. Now Tagliani has a train of six cars right behind him. So third all the way back to ninth right there. One mistake could knock you right out of the top 10 as the leader Kevin Lacroix heads down into turn eight. Gary Clute right behind. Let's see what the clock says this time as they cross the stripe. Who was faster this lap between Kevin Lacroix in the 74 and Gary Clute in the 59? Race leader Kevin Lacroix off a of turn 10. They work back to the line. The leader goes through lap number 28 up on the board. A minute 25.122. Gary Clute was faster. One minute 25. 0 0.020, so Clute is starting to reel him in. It was about two and a half seconds since down at 2.2. And Andrew Ranger only up to the 12th position right now, so he's just not making the ground that you would expect. Does this change your plan if you're out in front? Do you even come in for tires? If, or do you try to stretch 51 laps out of the rubber on the race car? This is going to be a fascinating race. The drivers have a control in their hands, but these crew chiefs are going to play a huge role. Well, indeed, uh, they would have got the wear numbers on these tires from the test days they did. Can you qualify on a set of tires and run one 51 laps and still be competitive? As we look at the race leader, 74, Kevin Lacroix, up the Andretti straightaway. Gary Clute, 59, all by himself in second for the moment. Then comes Tagliani, 18 and third, but he's coming under pressure from 47 LP Cumulant, who sits in that fourth place spot. And there's Andrew Ranger right in the middle of that pack, but he's caught up to J.F. LeBerge in the 91, who's battling with the 37 of Simone Dion Bien, but he's been unable to make an attempt on that position. Really surprises me that Ranger's momentum has stalled as much as it has. Looked like he might make a move to the inside of turn number 10, but he'll stick in line just ahead of the three of Jason Hathaway. Another driver on the charge, DJ Kennington, currently being shown in 15. That last lap for DJ Kennington, a minute 26.393. That is not going to do it as the pace up front is a minute 25. 
Lacroix goes in with 29 laps completed, working lap number 30, and it's 2.4 seconds back to Gary Clute. That lap, Lacroix was a little bit quicker than Clute and has been able to stretch his lead by a couple of car lengths. Down into turn number five, J.F. Dumoulin in the 0-4, races in the sixth position. Actually, he's up to fifth. He's gotten around the 36 of Alex LeBay. So J.F. Dumoulin in that Spectra Premium number 04, planning on running a partial schedule this season because he's got some conflicts with the driver coaching that he does. But uh, he really wants to make the most of the races he comes out and competes in. So that Spectra Premium 04, he's giving it a good run as Anthony Simone looks to the outside of Alex LeBay down into turn number eight. Simone, a pretty good road racer, is all over LeBay for the position as they come in at turn 10 and on the start finish right away. Now the 47 of LP Dumoulin is right on the rear deck of Tagliani in a one, takes a look on the inside, but Tagliani will shut the door, but Dumoulin is all over him for that third place position. And both Dumoulins are pretty quick right now. The top five are in the 125s, and then you've got a lot of 127s, 126, 128 as you stretch back through the field. But here goes LP Dumoulin looking to the inside in turn number three. And he'll go right alongside of Tagliani. Tag trying to hold him off as they work the short shoot out of three, headed for four. He's got the inside line through the left-hander, and Tagliani will turn back the bid by Dumoulin for that third place position. Back up in Amos corner. We'll see if he takes a look on the inside in the 5B. No, Tagliani battling and has managed to hold on to third. Dumoulin is right there in fourth. That is LP Dumoulin 47. JF Dumoulin 04 is fifth. Sixth is 36, Alex LeBay. Seventh is one, Anthony Simeone. Eighth is 22, Marc Antoine Cameron. And then in ninth is JF LeBears. Into turn number eight, a change in third as Tagliani gets shuffled back into fourth. And your new third place runner is LP Dumoulin, 47. LP Dumoulin worked the outside of Alex Tagliani in turn number four. I don't know if I have seen that before, but that is almost unheard of. You gotta have some guts to make that move, and he certainly does. Andrew Ranger back there still fired behind Simone Dino Pietti has been unable to break into the top 10. Ranger right now running in the 11th spot, but we're seeing cars really start to fade. Alex LeBay has dropped back a great deal in that number 36. So let's see as we have a look at the replay there of LP Dumoulin clearing Tagliani on the backstretch into turn eight. So are we, are we starting to see these tires really fall off or does Alex LeBay maybe have some sort of mechanical problem on the 36? Working lap 32 as we've got less than 20 laps to go. The one car that is coming up through the field, 22, Mark Antoine Cameron, who uh, started uh, back there in fourth, has worked his way up into the uh, sixth place position and is uh, clicking off laps here in a minute 25. We'll see how far up through the field he's able to come. And now a challenge for that second place position. LP Dumoulin has caught 59, the full center Gary Clute. And we've got a close battle here for second. Meanwhile, 74, Lacroix, the leader on the start finish straight away. And then it is 47, LP Dumoulin all over Gary Clute for second. A bit of a gap back to fourth and Alex Tagliani. 04, JF Dumoulin is there in fifth. Simone number one in the seventh place position. And we're seeing the field stretch out just a little bit. LP Dumoulin close to that gap. The last lap, LP Dumoulin was the fastest car on the racetrack by half a second. He was a half second faster than race leader Kevin Lacroix. WeatherTech number 47 working off of turn number three, chasing Gary Clute. Remember, we saw him work to the outside and tag the Indian in turn four. Don't expect he's going to do that here, but if he gets a good run down through turn number four, down the hill, then up the hill into turn five, he's definitely making a lot of horsepower under the hood of that number 47. He passed Tagliani on the outside of this Mario Andretti straightaway. See if he can do the same thing to Gary Clute in the 59. They go under the mobile one sign, LP Dumoulin, about a car like that half 
behind the 50 yard. He'll catch a draft from Gary Clute and swing to the outside. And he'll pull up alongside here, halfway up the Andretti straightaway. He has got the outside line into turn number eight, and he will grab that position going into the top of the S's. So LP Dumoulin around Gary Clute. He is your new second place car. Gary Clute heads to pit road in the number 59 trail con leasing machine. Let's see if he's gonna take on fresh rubber. John Fletcher, the crew chief on the 59 machine. We'll see if this is a scheduled pit stop or if something possibly wrong with the 59 car. Gary Clute heading down pit lane at pit road speed. Pulls in, the team has the jack. They've got tires in hand. He is taking fresh general tires on that trail con leasing. 59. Well, definitely the car was starting to slow and Dumoulin was able to muscle his way around into second. With Clute coming on to pit road, that'll move 18 Alex Tagliani to third. 0-4 JF Dumoulin runs fourth and rounding out the top five, the 22 of Marc Antoine Cameron, who is just six seconds back of the race leader. Wow, TJ Renamato in the 0-2 just went for a long slide through turn nine. Raymond Gabe pulls alongside. We saw Renamato spin out there in practice yesterday. It almost looked like a repeat, but he was able to gather it in. I'm really impressed with Gary Clute, John Fletcher, and that trail clock racing team. We saw DJ Kennington, our, our most experienced team in the pits, have trouble on pit road under yellow. You cannot afford to make a green flag pit stop and have any mistakes. It looks as though Gary Clute and team executed the perfect pit stop. He is back on the racetrack. Here comes Kevin Lacroix to do the same thing in the 74. Lacroix on the bumper to bumper machine on pit road. Let's see if Don Thompson Jr. The crew chief on the 74 can lead his crew to the same kind of flawless pit stop that Gary Clute's group was able to do last lap. 74 car rolls out of pit road and your new leader on the racetrack, 47 LP Dumoulin. So Dumoulin goes to the front after qualifying the seventh. And there is fresh general tire rubber going on the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. LP Dumoulin, your new leader on the racetrack. We're working lap number 35, Alex Tagliani, 18 up into second, 04, JF Dumoulin in third, then 22, Marc Antoine Cameron in fourth, and Anthony Simone in car number one, rounds out your top five. Gary Clute just came by us in turn 10. I believe he is gonna beat Kevin Lacroix quite handily off of pit road after making his tire change. And now these drivers wait. They're gonna have to hope for a yellow flag because Andrew Razor in the 27, DJ Kennington in the 17, Jason Hathaway in the number three. They don't need another caution. They don't need any gap. They've already put on their tires, so they've got that track position. Let's see how good these new general tires are. What kind of times Gary Clute and Kevin Lacroix can achieve out here with open racetrack? Checking that 22 car that continues to come up through the field. Marc Antoine Cameron, 22, is currently being shown fourth as uh, he had closed to within about four and a half seconds of the lead. But lap number 35 goes up on the board, less than 16 to go, and it is 47. LP Dumoulin, your race leader. Spectra Premium 04, JF Dumoulin on pit road. Looks like he might have lost a lug nut off the left rear and had to pick it up and hand thread it. It cost him a little bit of time. Every little bit of time on pit road costs so much ground on the racetrack when you're pitting under green. Race leader, LP Dumoulin through turn four in a Moss corner. Check the margin back here to Tagliani. He's just a couple of seconds back of the race leader in second. Then 22, Marc Antoine Cameron, now being shown in third, the one of Anthony Simone fourth. Alex LeBay in the 36 rounds up your top five. Marc Antoine Cameron's number 22 machine showing some wear there. The front end is all beat up from contact early in the race with Alex Tagliani. Looks to be staying on the race car right now, but if that starts to hang off anymore, it might get the attention of race officials and want them to come down pit road and uh, secure that bodywork or rip it right off the race car. So we'll keep our eyes on that situation as the race goes on. And they work out of turn number 10. That is Anthony Simone. Simone up into fourth. And then still the 36 of Alex LeBay. 
rounding out your top five. Simone's had a great drive here up into the fourth place position after starting on the outs on the inside of row six in 11th starting position. He's put on a great charge. So Gary Clute just turned a lap of a minute 24.5. The leader is turning 126 flat. So he is showing good speed right now, but so far behind on the racetrack that I'm not sure it's gonna matter. What he was able to do, Gary Clute did gain a lot of ground on Kevin LaCroix on pit road. We're hearing the 04 JF Dublin made a pit road violation. They're calling it for a pass through penalty. And that is going to take him well back out of the top 10 after working up into, I believe at one point was up there at about fifth. 27, Andrew Ranger continues to put on the charge. He is up into seventh in that Mopar Dodge. And on the and ready straightaway looking to get around the 91 car of J.F. LaVerge, who is going to be shown in the sixth place position. So Ranger putting in a late race charge. We work lap number 37 of 51 here in the Clarington 200. Anthony Simone in that blue and white number one machine closing in. He is turning some great laps. You see a move to the inside by Andrew Ranger on J.F. LaBerge. He was not able to make that work. Now he's going to try him coming off the corner. <laughs> what a mess coming under the start finish line. Ranger still to the inside, unable to outbreak J.F. LaBerge down into turn one. But Anthony Simone in that silver line tools number one, closing in on Mark Antoine Cameron's 22. He is used to running on old tires. He has run the entire race here on one set of tires in the past finished on the podium, so Anthony Simone is no stranger to really having to wheel a race car on poor tires as J.F. LeBaire sideways into turn three. Andrew Ranger will take advantage. Drive by Hathaway, makes contact, goes up over the front end of LeBaire, sending LeBaire spinning off the racetrack, and that's going to bring a full course caution. And there was debris on the racetrack that got hit by one of the trailing cars, and you could almost see that coming as uh, a Ranger tried to get around the 91 of LaBerge in turn number three. LaBerge went wide, Ranger locked up the brakes, was able to get through and make the pass and then contact right behind involving uh, LaBerge and uh, I believe it was Hathaway in the three car. He's got damage to his race car as well. So we go to our fourth full course yellow here this afternoon in the Clarington 200 as this one is going to be a sprint to the finish, working lap number 39 of 51. We've got just 12 laps to go. As we look at it on replay, LaBerge swings wide, and then Hathaway tries to go through on the inside. Uh, he almost climbed right up on top of the hood of the 91. So we'll see if there's damage to the uh, three car there of uh, Jason Hathaway, the Kubota Chaco Chevrolet but big damage there to the number 91 car. He's gonna try to get it re-fired up and uh, make it back here. You can see the entire hood on the car lying in the grass there in turn number three. Yeah, they've definitely redecorated the bodywork on that 91 of LaBerge. He had kept Andrew Ranger behind him for many laps out there, was doing a nice job behind the wheel. Ranger obviously was growing a little impatient but he's savvy. And I had a chat with Ranger before the race today. He says, you know, I think I'm going to let the drivers at the front just go mess around and, and do what they do, and I'm going to try to avoid the incident if there is one. And I started laughing. I said, Andrew, you know that used to be you, the driver that wanted to be at the front all the time, even sometimes mixing things up. And so we're under a full course yellow, getting set to go back to green here. I would anticipate maybe for about a 10 lap shootout to the uh, checkered flag as we continue under the full course yellow. The safety crew over there in turn number three, they wanna make sure they've picked up all the bits and pieces off of the racetrack so nobody cuts down a tire. So they have checked out the racetrack there, the safety car in position, and uh, we will be, I would think, a couple of laps before we are set to go back to green. So we're looking at unofficially about a 10 lap sprint to the finish, Adam. Well, this was actually the exact scenario we chatted about there. There was a chapel service, Mike Arnold, the, the pastor uh, for the race series. 
gave us Thurman this morning, and a few of us were sitting there. Of course, we're talking racing because that's what you do afterwards. And LP Dumoulin was one of the one of the people there. Uh, Larry Jackson, a crew member, was another, a longtime driver with the series, but involved with the CBRT racing team. And we got chatting about scenarios where there's always drivers who set the strategy for the race. You know, you come in and take fuel the first opportunity after about lap 12. If you're leading the race, you want to take tires at a certain time where you don't leave yourself vulnerable. But there's the opportunity for someone to do something outside of the box. Andrew Ranger did it last year by taking tires very late in the race, charged to the lead, but he was penalized. Wow, and Alex tagged the any turns hard right to come down pit lane. Everybody in the top five coming to pit road. Andrew Ranger was penalized after contact with Kevin Lacroix, but taking fresh tires very close to the end of the race turned out to almost be the winning strategy. Now we're seeing these drivers at the front. LP Dumlin, who had been the race leader, coming down to pit lane to the attention of his crew. They're going to put on four new general tires on that race car. But look at how many cars we still have on the lead lap. All the way down to JF Dumlin, I believe, in the 21st position. I could be wrong. Uh, JF LaBerge and JF Dumlin may be a lap down. But either way, you take on fresh tires, you're going to be down around 15th spot. And we saw Andrew Ranger unable to work his way through the field. He's picking up a lot of spots right now because everybody pitted. But how much does he have left in those tires? Mark, Ant uh, Mark Antoine Cameron, one of the drivers who came on to pit road here for fresh rubber, as did uh, Tagliani in the 18. And uh, we'll reset the order on the racetrack as we're under this uh, full course yellow. And uh, looks like uh, Ranger stays out. So Andrew Ranger will be right up there on the front row. So we mentioned it a little earlier this weekend, Adam, that Andrew Ranger had some unfinished business as to what happened here a year ago at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in this uh, NASCAR Pinty Series opener. And uh, had a pretty good run here in qualifying, starting the Mopar Pennzoil Dodge in fifth. And right now, he is being shown second behind the pace car. And I think he's got what he needs to get here to the checkered flag and complete the 51 laps. Right now, we're working lap number 40. It'll be just 11 to go next time by. And just like we discussed, when Andrew Ranger came into the pits, along with DJ Kennington, along with Jason Hathaway, we said, what could happen later in the race? And then it's more of an even fight. So what we're going to see on this restart is drivers on older tires doing their best to maintain their track position while drivers behind them on fresher rubber are trying to take advantage of the fresh rubber. I think it's going to be an amazing finish to this race. The fireworks are going to start a little bit early on this Victoria Day weekend. I think we're about to see them when this race goes back to green. Well, uh, as they work up the Andretti straightaway, it does look as though Andrew Ranger will be the leader on the racetrack next time by. It'll be 40 laps completed, 11 to go in the Clarington 200. Jason Hathaway in car number three, making his return to the series as a full-time driver in that Kubota Chaco premium bulk system Chevrolet. Ed Hackinson, of course, a gentleman who's been involved in uh, stock car racing for a long, long time uh, with Chaco. They picked up the Kubota uh, sponsorship and uh, right now he uh, is uh, going to be sitting right up at the front of the field. His best lap is a minute 24 point, uh, pardon me, a minute 25.021. So knocking on the door of uh, what has really been the fastest laps of the race. If you can set that pace at a minute 24, you're really up there with the best of the drivers. Watching the field go by, Andrew Ranger out in front of that 27, Jason Hathaway second in the Kubota number three. You've got to wonder what damage does he have on the car from the contact with he made, that he made with LaBerge. Could he have cut down a right uh, left front tire rather in that skirmish? Quite often if you puncture a tire, it's a very slow leak. You might not feel it, but once you get up to speed, he's definitely going to know if he has any problems. Ditch. I was just going to say the same thing. Look, there's DJ up there in third after qualifying the Castro Edge Dodge in 10th. And uh, DJ has just run a solid, consistent, clean race. He stayed out of trouble, and he is right there in the uh, third place spot. 
followed by the 28 of Riley Herbst. And Herbst likewise has uh, had an impressive run here this afternoon after starting 15th on the inside of row eight. Herbst is all the way up into fourth. And another driver with a brilliant run, Jason White, in car number 21, who was 14th on the grid. He sits there in fifth. You know, confidence is so good for a race car driver. Jason White's done some ARCA racing this year. He's competed in the NASCAR Truck Series. A little bit of confidence. He comes out to the racetrack today. This is the best I've seen Jason White run. I've watched him make some moves. They weren't always successful, but in the past, you'd see Jason try something and really screw himself up. You might see him make a mistake, make contact, damage the car. I've watched him make moves. They didn't work out. He backed out of it. He's running a really smart race. The driver from Sun Peaks, British Columbia, and the Powder Ventures Excavation, number 21. Let's see if he can stay up there because he's got some drivers right behind him. Gary Clute in the 59. Uh, Kevin Lacroix in the 74 with much fresher tires. This is going to be a wild restart. We're going to come back to green this time out of turn number 10. The lights are off on the pace car. Indeed, that Chevrolet Camaro pace car halfway up the Andretti straightaway. The lights have been uh, turned off as we look at uh, a couple of the other drivers there in the top 10. Gary Clute, seventh. Right alongside of him will be Kevin Lacroix. And another driver who has uh, rebounded and moved back up here, Mark Dilley in car number 64. Dilley all the way up into the 10th place spot. I think Mark uh, would be happy with a top 10 finish in that 64 car after uh, having a bit of a disappointing qualifying run. And how about this? All 21 cars still who are still on the racetrack are still on the lead lap. 21 cars, everybody coming to this restart, still on the lead lap, still in contention for a great finish. The pace car peels off onto pit road. Andrew Ranger in the Mopar 27, that brilliant blue colored race car on the outside. His return to the NASCAR Pinty Series. The Kubota number three at Jason Hathaway. 10 laps to go this time as they come under the green flag. We are back underway in the Clarington 200. It'll be a 10 lap shootout, 41 laps in the box. 10 to go here in the Clarington 200. Off of turn number one, Andrew Ranger in the number 27. Opar Dodge goes to the front. Second place, that is Hathaway in the three. And then side-by-side -side battle going on here for third with DJ Kennington trying to slide up there into the third place spot. So it is Ranger 27, your leader off of turn three. Hathaway number three in second, Kennington 17. Runs in third, Riley Herbst is fourth. Jason Hathaway made a move to the outside, coming off of turn number two. Well, the inside off of two, which set him up for the outside of turn three. That didn't work. He didn't lose a lot of ground. He's within a car like the Vander Ranger as they start down the long straightaway. Let's see if the fresh tires are starting to move to the front. It looks to me that Gary Clute is up into the fifth position in that blue and white number 59, just behind Riley Herbst in the 28, getting a draft down the straightaway. And Kevin McQuad in the 74 also making his move. Lacroix, who has led here this afternoon, shuffled back, but now he is putting on a charge. 59, Gary Clute up into that fifth place position. Then Lacroix in sixth, into turn 10, on the start finish straightaway. 27, Andrew Ranger in the Mopar Dodge comes to the line. Lap number 42 goes up on the board, and there is the change there in that fourth and fifth place position. As Clute 59 and Lacroix number 74 are running in fourth and fifth and on the charge, Kevin Lacroix challenging Gary Clute up into turn number two. The outside of turn two is not a place most people like to make a move. Kevin Lacroix was just looking for some clean real estate to work with. He'll have a look to the inside of turn three, tucked back in line. Gary Clute made that pass in turn 10 to Riley Herbs, and Kevin Lacroix was able to take advantage of Herbs going offline to make the pass as well, and Lacroix got a great run on Clute. Both of them trying to close in on DJ Kennington as laps wind down. We have nine laps remaining here in the Clarington 200. Opening race of 2019 for the NASCAR Pinty Series. TJ Renamato off into the grass, gathers it up. Back on the racetrack he comes. That was down in turn number three, I believe. That was taking place as they work up the Andretti straightaway. Rangers been able to open up a bit of a gap here on Hathaway. In car number three, Andrew Ranger, the Mopar Dodge had about a one second advantage. Now here is the battle for third on the inside. Gary Clute has pushed 
17, DJ Kenny turned into fourth and now fifth as Kevin Lacroix moves around. So they shuffle the deck in turn number nine. Ranger, your leader, but now Clute 59 to third. 74 McQua fourth and DJ Kennington 17 is fifth. And these guys are playing bumper cars throughout the field. LP Dublin trying to get through traffic. Alex LeBay just made contact with Mark Dilly trying to get through traffic. This is no holds barred NASCAR racing. Gary Clute up to the third position chasing down Jason Hathaway who missed turn two. Hathaway way offline going into turn number two. Here goes Clute. Can he make the move into three? right up on his rear bumper as they peel off at turn number three. And now Lacroix will follow Clute off at turn three. They're side by side for that second place position. Gary Clute on the outside. Help and then it is Lacroix who will go around Hathaway as well. So they are now into second and third. Gary Clute, 59, back into second and 74. That is the Lacroix entry in third, and then the three of Hathaway shuffle back into fourth. They're all chasing the race leader, 27, Andrew Ranger. And watching Gary Clute and Kevin Lacroix is like watching a couple of basketball stars play a game of horse. Gary Clute makes the move. Kevin Lacroix says, yeah, no problem. I can do this too. Both these drivers driving the absolute wheels off these race cars as laps wind down. Here comes LP Dumoulin looking to make a move. Wow, Gary Clute in turn number nine almost spins the car around as LP Dumoulin to the inside of DJ Kennington. And LP Dumoulin will pick up the spot. Kennington being a push down a one more position. And we have got a problem here. The 46 car is down. Brett Taylor uh, is off the racetrack. I believe that might be on the back straightaway as well. So Brett Taylor off the racetrack. We work lap number 45. And the, what race officials right now are trying to see if there's any power in the 46. If he's able to back that car up behind the fence, it puts them in a safe position where we can continue this race. No, yellow flag is being called. What a finish this sets up. For the Clarington 200, we are under yellow. Remember this, they go back to the last completed lap to set the field. We may see some shuffling of race cars. I can't remember when all of these moves were made, but it, it may cost Gary Clute, Kevin Lacroix position. We'll see how the lineup shuffles up, but boy, oh boy. Last lap, Andrew Ranger turned to 125 flat. Gary Clute and Kevin Lacroix both turned to 124.8. So that's close, but two tenths of a second is two tenths of a second in racing time. Well, they were definitely coming with those fresh general tires able to get into the minute 24s. Ranger uh, on uh, much older tires, a minute 25, but he was still doing a nice job of keeping that Mopar Dodge going. Brett Taylor looks like no power uh, with that 46 car that is off the racetrack that brings out yet another full course yellow here this afternoon. This race scheduled for 51 laps were on uh, lap number 45 as the field rolls on the start finish straightaway and works down into turn number one. So officially six laps to go. And uh, it's going to take them at least two or three laps to get that Brett Taylor car out of there uh, before we're able to go back to green and uh, conclude the Clarington 200. What a race it's been. What disappointment for Brett Taylor. Last year's Justin's Rookie of the Year, that 46 car, he still had all the fenders on it. He did a great job today. Not the way you want to see a driver end up. And that's going to be such a painful result. It's going to cost him the top 20 finish because everybody on the track, as we said, still on the lead lap. So you have a problem this close to the end. And it's going to knock him back to the 21st spot. Well, let's run down the field. They may shuffle a couple of these cars as they look at the lap charts and go back to the last fully completed lap of the field before the latest full force yellow came out. Andrew Ranger, your race leader in the Mopar Dodge, 45 laps completed for him. Gary Clute in the second, our pole sitter who's been uh, Having a, just a great weekend. Third, Kevin Lacroix in the 74, bumper to bumper Dodge. Fourth is the three of Jason Hathaway. Fifth is 47 LP Dumoulin. Sixth is 17 DJ Kennington in the Castrol Edge Dodge. Seventh, 28 Riley Herbst. 
Eight is 22, Mark Antoine Cameron. Ninth is 21, Jason White. And then rounding out your top 10, the number one of Anthony Simone. So the tow truck has uh, made his way around and uh, they'll maybe try to push start and get that car back here to the uh, pit area as quickly as possible so we can look at uh, at least a four, maybe five lap sprint to the checkered flag here this afternoon. Tow truck right on the back bumper of Brett Taylor, gonna give him a push. We hear over the officials radio that the LP Dumoulin 4017 is questioning NASCAR and where they've put them. I believe they put Dumoulin back behind DJ Kennington in the 17. And Pat, like we said, you go back to the last completed lap, not the last time the leaders crossed the start finish line, but the last time the entire field completed a lap to set the lineup for the restart. So we knew some drivers, would, it would cost some of them positions, but it's the fairest way to do timing and scoring when you don't have the luxury of scoring loops all the way around the racetrack like, like you would see in a NAS, uh, Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series race. Well, indeed, the problem uh, was uh, on the uh, back straightaway there for the 46 of Brett Taylor, and the tow truck is just gonna give him a push uh, back here to the uh, paddock area. So this should not take too long. I think maybe two more laps and then we'll be set to go back to green. So that should set up for what will be about a four lap shootout uh, here this afternoon. Maybe three, but hopefully four as uh, they are ready into turn number eight of the S's. In uh, just a minute, that uh, car will be off of the racetrack. That uh, will take us around to lap 47 next time by. And then, uh, so I think we're looking uh, lap 48. At the end of 48, we'll go back to three and probably a three lap shootout. Yeah, I think that's how it's gonna be, Pat, because pit road is still closed. We're looking at the red and yellow flag at the entrance of pit road with Amy Wong. And by NASCAR rule, if, if, they, if they go by the the rule of the book, you have to open pit road under yellow at some point before you can go back to green. So I believe they'll come by this time. Hopefully they open pit road. That'll be lap 47 complete. And then they'll give the one to go that same lap on the back straightaway. And we'll have that, hopefully, a three lap run to the finish, barring any further yellow flags. Well, either way, I think Andrew Ranger is gonna be involved in another fantastic finish in an NASCAR Pinty Series race here on Victoria Day weekend at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, as was the case uh, a year ago when we had that controversial uh, pass uh, down in Moss Corner. Ranger right now sitting up there at the front of the field. Next time by, it'll be 47 of 51 laps completed. Gary Clute, 59 second, Lacroix, 74 third, Hathaway in the three will be fourth. Then DJ Kennington, uh, as they go back to the last fully completed lap for the field, will start inside row three in the fifth position. Then LP Dumoulin uh, in car 47, put back to sixth. Riley Herbst, 28, and Jason White, 21, will make up row four. 22, Marc Antoine Cameron, and number one, Anthony Simone, back there in 10th, will go uh, back in row number five. So. Next time by, uh, lap 47 will be completed and then look for us to go back to green at the end of lap number 48. And I can see now why LP Dumoulin in the 47 was lobbying as hard as he was, or at least why his crew would have been. LP Dumoulin's gonna restart six. Because we restart side by side, it's gonna put him behind Gary Clute and Jason Hathaway. If he had restarted fifth, it just puts them that much better position going down into turn one. Just track position is everything in this game when you're getting down to the finish. So it basically knocks him, knocks them that much further out. But as we know, anything can happen at the end of these races. I'm sure there's gonna be fireworks. Pit road is open. Don't expect anyone near the front of the field to take advantage. Maybe cars deep in the field might duck down, but I doubt we'll see anybody head on to pit road unless they've got some sort of a problem on their race car. Well, the big question, does uh, Andrew Ranger have enough tire and race car to hold off Gary Clute and Kevin LaCroix? The clock does not say that. 
As uh, you alluded to, uh, it was uh, minute 24s for Clute and Lacroix. The best Ranger could do uh, before we went to the latest full course yellow was a minute 25. So again, I don't think he'll have the tires to hold off here, Lacroix and Clute. And so the two drivers who started on the front row almost 50 laps later, looks like the two drivers will be right there with the the uh, 27 car of Ranger battling for the win. So in the top five, you've got Andrew Ranger on older tires, Gary Clute and Kevin Lacroix on fresher tires. Jason Hathaway and DJ Kennington on older tires. Then it's LP Dumoulin in the 47, Riley Herbst in the 28. They're on fresher tires. So we've got a mix of strategies going on at the front of this field, but you give Andrew Ranger a sniff of a checkered flag, and he is gonna do anything he can to keep people behind him. It's a turn of events because for the last few years, it's always seen that Kevin Lacroix was the rabbit or Alex Tagliani was the rabbit. Back in 2007, when the NASCAR Pinty Series started, Andrew Ranger, of course, was our first champion. He was always at the front of the field in these road races. It was he and J.R. Fitzpatrick. So this is not a position he's not accustomed to, even though in recent years we usually see him making a charge late in the race, but he's restarted late race at the front many, many times. So the field makes his way through Moss Corner and preparing to run up the Andretti straightaway. We'll check to see whether or not uh, the lights uh, have been turned off as yet on that Chevrolet Camaro pace car. As next time by, it looks like they have. So we are getting set to go back to green at the completion of lap number 48. It is going to be a three lap NASCAR Pity Series shootout for the win here in the opening round of the championship. 27, Andrew Ranger, who started fifth on the grid in that Mopar Benzoil Dodge. Will be on the inside of row one. Alongside will be the 59 of our pole sitter, Gary Clute. Kevin Lacroix, who has uh, driven a brilliant race here after qualifying second fastest in the bumper to bumper total Dodge. And then it is the uh, three of Jason Hathaway, who's going to be on the outside of row two. DJ Kennington, 17, in the Castrol Edge Dodge, and 47 LP Dumoulin will line up in row three. 28, Riley Herbst, and 21, Jason White will make up row four. And then back there in the fifth row, 22, Mark Antoine Cameron, and number one, Anthony Simone. That is the group. Pace car is off. The field comes in at turn 10. Three lap shootout to settle it here in the Clarington 200 NASCAR Pinty Series race. Andrew Ranger brings them off a of turn number 10 at a steady pace. This is a fairly quick restart on old tires. That's the way he wants to do it. Gary Clute on fresher rubber working the outside down into turn number one. Clute loses the grip on the front of the 59. Kevin Lacroix gets by into second. He's going to chase Andrew Ranger down towards turn number two and apply the pressure. Indeed, there is uh, Lacroix right on the rear bumper of Andrew Ranger. Will he look on the inside into turn number three? No, he does not. Alex will follow Ranger off of turn number three. And these three cars have pulled a little bit of a breakaway now on the fourth place car of Jason Hathaway as they peel down through the left-hander at turn number four, headed to Moss Corner. Look for Lacroix to take a look on the inside into 5B. Ranger protects the inside. And now the run out of Moss Corner up the Andretti straightaway here on lap number 49. It'll be just two laps to go next time by. Andrew Ranger got a nice run through turn five. That set him up well for the Mario Andretti straightaway. And he is making some great horsepower. Kevin Lacroix able to keep pace, but not really able to make a move right now. When they get to the stripe, it'll be two laps left now. Lacroix right up on the back bumper of the 27. Remember last year, the roles were reversed. Kevin Lacroix was out in front. Andrew Ranger was doing the chasing. Carnage ensued. And if you remember back a few years, Gary Clute was in this very position when he picked up his first victory when the two leaders tangled in turn number 10 of the last lap. Gary Clute stuck through to take the win. 49 laps in the books, working lap number 50, and Kevin Lacroix is all over the rear bumper of Andrew Ranger as they swing down through turn number two. Ranger gets a little bit loose off of the left-hander, now into three. Here comes Lacroix again. 
had a notion to go in on the inside, but Ranger running a really tight inside line through turn number three. And these three drivers to settle it as they work down through turn number four, headed for Moss Corner. Andrew Ranger keeps the tight line in turn four. Kevin Lacroix loses the grip, slides a little bit. That allows Gary Klute to close in, but the top three still nose to tail through turn five. Gary Klute's been making better horsepower than anybody this afternoon. Let's see if he's able to use the draft on Kevin Lacroix and make a move. He has really preferred the inside of turn number eight. Can he do it this time? They will see the white flag in the air when they cross the start finish line. Full marks to Andrew Ranger. He has done an incredible job holding off both 74 Lacroix and Clute in 59. But again, they'll close it up into the top of the S's. Lacroix right on the rear bumper here of Andrew Ranger as they come into turn number 10. Lacroix dives in on the inside, will grab the lead. Andrew Ranger looking to make a crossover move. He's got his nose to the inside of the 74 as they take the white flag. Down into turn number one. They're crashing off of turn 10. Big pile off of turn 10. Side by side in turn number one. It's a drag race down to the second turn for the lead. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to finish this one or not as the white flag is out. But they've got some time to make up their mind. Right now in front is Kevin Lacroix. Andrew Ranger dropping back by a couple of car lengths. Here goes Clute to the inside in turn three. No can't make it stick. Their nose and tail off of turn number three. The mess in turn 10 has been cleared off. We are going to be able to finish this one under green from the looks of it. Down they come from turn three to turn four. Kevin Lacroix sideways, all the way sideways. Down into five, Andrew Ranger closing in. Can he make the move? This is what happened last year to get Andrew Ranger in trouble. He follows Kevin Lacroix through turn five. Now they're gonna run down the Mario Andretti straightaway, nose to tail. Kevin Lacroix pulls away from the 27 as they get onto the straightaway under the Mobile One Bridge. Kevin Lacroix with the advantage. Andrew Ranger has one more opportunity, but boy, oh boy, Kevin Lacroix is making some big horsepower in that 74. Down into turn number eight. Lacroix drives it deep into the corner. Andrew Ranger not able to close in. He's got to be perfect. Kevin Lacroix can't afford a mistake. He gets loose through turn nine. Down into turn 10 goes Lacroix with the lead by two car lengths. Kevin Lacroix is going to win the Clarington 200 by three car lengths over Andrew Ranger. Gary Clute rounds out the top three. Alfie Dumoulin comes home fourth. Jason Hathaway rounds out the top five. J.F. Dumlin, nice recovery on what uh, he was penalized earlier on. What a race. I'm headed to victory lane, Pat. Unbelievable finish of the Clarington 200. We're going to be joining Adam Ross at the uh, victory podium. And so we'll be checking in on the victory podium, but what a finish down to the end. We had a mad scramble for positions at the tail end of the top 10 here in turn number 10. Luckily, all of those drivers were able to continue and we stayed green for a thrilling finish. Kevin Lacroix being able to get around Andrew Ranger who put in an absolute superb drive to hang on to second. Gary Clute, the pole sitter, comes home in third. So it is the 74 Dodge of Kevin Lacroix, the bumper to bumper total Dodge with the win. 27 Andrew Ranger, who started fifth in the Mopar Pennzoil Dodge in second and up for third was Gary 